All right, here we go. Inside the 10, Michael Shamus, Danica. Andrew Webster and Peter Basaltis. Welcome. Hello, Danica. Welcome to the lounge. Uh, to we've got you. We've got um, plenty to discuss this morning. So let's start off uh, with a topic surrounding the Roosters. Um, should they let Joseph Swali'i go early? Of course, he has signed in the future with Rugby Union. I think it's a lot tougher than and more problematic than people understand. I think there's some people at the Roosters that would be prepared to let him go. I don't think they're happy with the fact that he's signed with another code and they have him for another year. They want to move on. Uh, I think Trent Robinson would definitely see value in having him there next season. Rugby would take him, but they're not going to give him the 1.6 that he's signed on per season from 2025. So what's he on around 7, 750 apparently at the Roosters next year? I don't know if rugby's going to be prepared to throw that much at him next year to get him early. So I don't think it might be a case that he won't be able to come come early. But I have to say, I feel sorry for the kid. Mm. I feel sorry for a lot of the criticism and the speculation around him. He's been pushed and pulled in all these different directions since he was 11 years old. Um, some of the commentary in the last couple of weeks saying that he's not going to live up to that pay packet in another sport, that he doesn't start till 25 and he just turned 20 is just insane. Mm. So... Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where he lands. Yeah, I, I don't, if Trent Robinson wants him to stay, I think Joseph Swally will, will stay for Trent Robinson. And also, the reality is, what are they going to do, the Roosters, if they let him go with that money? You said, what, seven, seven fifty? If they let him go now, what are they going to get next year? We know the club's already trying to sign for next year. There's no one actually around to sign. Mm. So if you let him go, what are you going to get? Mm. There, there's no benefit for Trent Robinson, who's under pressure, because the Roosters are no guarantee to play finals football. They haven't had a good season. Why would you have a team that's inferior to the one you could possibly have, just to let him go. For, for the sake of what? He can go play at an Olympic Games. I, I just, I think the Roosters need him because they can't get anyone better. And there's a lot of clubs that have players just for a year. So if you've got an asset like Joseph Swali'i on your books for a year, even though you've got Dom Young heading to your club and, and Billy Smith, it's great seeing him back playing some pretty good football. Mm. But if you've got Joseph Swali'i on your books and if you're Trent Robinson, you say, yeah, we want to keep him. Yeah. And, and, and the club can't let politics get in the way just because there are certain people at the club who don't like his agent or weren't happy with the fact that he managed to sign the deal and the Roosters thought they would, he would stay at the club. You can't let that get in the way of trying to win a competition because that Roosters team, to be fair, should be in the conversation to win a, cup, a premiership mm. this year. And you do have to feel for Joseph as well, as you said, uh, Webby, that there's so much focus on him for just, the, the for just signing, signing he's not gonna a be, He's going to be a dud. He's going to be a dud player that's never going to live up to the hype. Mm. He's not even, he just turned 20 a few weeks ago. <laughs> but, but what? It comes with the territory, Webby. Like, you're going to sign that deal, it's going to come. You're going to sign a monster deal to leave the code and be the face of another code. People are going to have an opinion about you. Whether well, that's, I'm, I'm not I saying know, he doesn't. Know. They're allowed to have their have opinion. Opinions. I'm just saying it's stupid. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it is very harsh. Mm. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, Gordon Tallis said last week that teams cheat to win premierships. Is this fair or quite unfair? Because I know the Penrith Panthers, they're not happy with these comments. No, they're not happy with the Penrith Panthers. And reality is Penrith won their first premiership a million dollars under the salary cap with Regan Campbell-Gillard, Dallin Watene Zelezniak and Wanga Blake all being paid for to play elsewhere. So... Uh, the reality is Penrith, not only did they play under the cap, but they did so with a team who 12 months earlier, that, they were sitting down the bottom of the ladder. I think Magic Round, the year before they won the comp, they were last. They were last. And Ivan Cleary, his first season at the club, everyone was thinking this is a, a poor decision by the club to, to bring him here and the, the pain that they went through to bring Ivan Cleary back. But I, I, I know what Gordy's referring to, that this insinuation that there are teams who, who do things behind, you know, behind closed doors, you know, pa brown paper bags, all this talk... Re reality is we're not going to know what happens behind the scenes unless salaries are made public. And that's not going to happen. The RPI can't agree on who gets car parking passes, let alone making, <laughs> <laughs> making salaries pu public. It's not going to happen. And so there's always going to be speculation. And, and that's a, I feel like that's also a privacy thing. That's opening you up to so much criticism yep. for, for yeah. fans. And it's not the players' fault if their managers argue a great salary for them and they're in a position where the club can pay. That's... Look, the one thing here is that we know it's not a level playing field because some clubs have access to... Well, they're not sponsors, but those that want to 100%. be third-party um, supporters of certain players and the like. But I want to throw something out there. And I know it will never happen because it could hurt too many clubs and too many individuals, but what the rugby league landscape would look like if we had no salary cap. You'd have four or five teams competing for the competition every year and the others would die. Straight out. That's just what would happen if there was no cap.
the strong clubs survive. Yeah, and exactly. The, the, the rich get richer yeah, and the poor get the picture. The Salty made a point, and I agree. There are clubs out there who have a lot more pulling power for third parties, but Penrith's not one of them. No, definitely Penrith's not. not one of them. They haven't got the ability, like a Brisbane Broncos or a Sydney Roosters, to attract third party sponsors to the club. It's happening now, but that's because of the players that they've developed over the uh, years have become superstars. I, I, I was surprised by Gordon. I really respect Gordon Tallis, um, but I was surprised by his comments because Penrith, have, you're right, they've shared two big name players for the last three years. Mm. Um, so they are abiding by it. The problem with the cap is that it makes... It, and I've heard Gus say this before, and it's true, it, it forces teams to want to cheat and bend the rules and try and get around it. Until we look at um, the transfer of players in this game, as we've said on this panel many times before, and seriously consider a draft, internally and externally, I think it's never going to be a, a, a level playing field. Also, I know it's easy to be suspicious, but... <coughs> All right, say you're a young player coming through. Are you going to take 200 less to go to the Roosters or Penrith or, or mm. 200 more to go to the Tigers? And that's what I think a lot of people would be surprised to see some people's salaries because I, I know certain players that they have taken half of what they've been offered at other clubs to go mm. to a strong club who they know will, you know, help set them up for a life after footy because they've got great contacts there. And, that, and that's, you know, hats off to the club for, for having that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing. I think you need to... Like, clubs you, clubs um, have to get their house in order if they want players to come there, then stay. The public's making the salaries public, really. We all know within 50 to 100 grand what those players are earning. Clubs talk, player managers talk. So, really, they may not be public, but you get a rough idea of what players are on and the pressure comes anyway. Mm. Yeah, but I, I think it is a privacy matter. Don't put the salaries out there. I feel... I want to know Webby's salary. Yeah, what's Actually, Webby you know on? what? <laughs> Media salaries would be very interesting. <laughs> He's lost count. Yeah. He just goes There's into no all goes these out. different... <laughs> 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 all right, thanks for joining us. Salty, great to have you on the lounge. Hopefully thanks for having you, me. Uh, in a few weeks to come as well. Uh, all right, stick around, because coming up next, we're going to be previewing all the Sunday footy action. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment.